Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis update of commodities. Uh, the reason I do commodities and the overall markets uh, is because I think commodities are gonna be the spot where they really go higher uh, for a good period of time. And the overall markets can also go higher with it, uh, but I just think the next five to 10 years it's gonna do very well, uh, commodities that is. Uh, either way, if you guys need help with commodities related things, you can check out, check out the finding-value.com website. You can use the word discount in the coupon code if you guys want to join. We do have a midweek update coming out today uh, with what I think looks good. And then uh, we have a Saturday, 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time for the Platinum Question and Answer session uh, coming up uh, if you want to join and go to that. So um, again, we're going to go through the dollar, yields, work our way through precious metals, and then commodities and ETFs that I follow. Uh, looks like we got a quarter point rate hike from Powell, as expected. Markets sold off, then got bought back up. Um, I don't know exactly what these markets are thinking, but uh, it seems to me that uh, things are looking still quite good, uh, even though the charts look good before it. So we could potentially uh, continue uh, a run, which I was expecting as before. And uh, we'll get through and I'll show you what it looks like. So. We're going to start with the dollar, the DXY. We've got the Batman topping pattern. Uh, this is this guy here, the Batman topping pattern, and that generally works its way lower. Uh, the dollar did sell off today quite dramatically, 0.88%. That's that big guy there. Uh, will that continue? That's something that we'll have to see. Uh, but overall, momentum's down. I do think that the dollar is going to weaken for a period of time. Uh, the 10 year yield also fallen down 3.74%. So this yield is falling. And what does that mean? That's going to be good for the housing market. The 10 year yield and mortgage rates are linked. And it, this does definitely look like we want to fall down as it's breaking below this support level. Uh, well, actually, I should say we're at the support level right now. And if we get at any more selling pressure, I think that we are. Uh, ready to break down and below. So we'll see if we break below it uh, tomorrow or this week and if yields are going to head lower, which I think they will in the short period of in the short term. Uh, bond price is heading higher today, up 0.94% on the 20-year bond price. Uh, we are coming up to a resistance level here, and we'll see if that breaks. You could also throw in kind of a maybe a lar larger pattern. Maybe we bounce around a little bit. We'll find out. Uh, and I'm just kind of putting that in there. It's not, we have to see what it does. And then the 30 year yield also falling uh, down. And this curve is uninverting some. So the 10 year is falling at a faster pace than the 30 year. And what that, what that means is that this, when this goes up, for the most part, when this kind of trends higher, gold and silver like that. It likes it a lot. So what we had today were the right market conditions for gold and silver to go higher in. That's what I'm saying. So the CRB index did fall today. That's very much what crude oil did. Crude oil uh, getting a little bit of selling pressure. I know we had a little bit of a crude oil build. And I do think that those builds uh, will turn into deficits over time. I think the first half, you know, the, I should say the first quarter could be a little bit rough for oil and it has been rough. We've been bouncing around, but we have broken to the upside of a pattern. I think we're going to go sideways for a little bit. And then I think we're going to kind of walk higher in a grinding fashion uh, over the rest of 2023. That's my uh, prediction there. So look at the CRB to S&P 500. Um, the S&P 500 is taken off. So this ratio is the S&P 500 dropping against the CRB index. So the S&P is outperforming commodities at this time in the short term. And that's the index. Looking at gold, gold rocketing higher today, still in that uptrend fashion. I don't see any large selling pressure days here. Uh, so that looks good to continue. Uh, we are coming through a resistance area. That resistance area is where we've had previous buying and selling pressure, kind of in here and in here. And we're coming right through it. And it looks like it's cutting through it pretty good. So we could see a nice big move in gold to the upside. Silver also following suit. We've got a little breakout here to the upside. 
Uh, this nice, strong resistance line that I've drawn here down, touching up on the closing points. Lots of wicks at the bottom. People buying it up. So this looks good to go higher as well for silver. A uh, little bit longer term view. That's what it looks like zoomed out. Kind of coming on out. We've got a nice big double bottom. We broke out. We've done a little bit of consolidation. I think we're ready to go higher at some point here uh, very soon. And then looking at platinum, platinum slightly lower today. Uh, but again, I think we're getting some support here. The candlesticks opening and closing prices are coming together. Uh, when that happens, we generally get a nice little um, bottoming pattern and we'll work our way on higher. XEU to gold ratio also heading higher. That's looking good. So the precious metals, uh, gold and silver mining companies are outperforming gold itself. And gold did pretty well today. So we should see some pretty good outperformance today in GDX and SILJ. And there we are. There's that outperformance heading higher, looks good. And then SILJ also looking good. And again, we've got that long-term kind of resistance coming through here that we have to get through. And that's what we're trying to break on through. Crude oil down today. Let's get off that, go to the dailies. So here's crude oil, a uh, little bit of selling pressure. Again, we're above this trend line and we're just doing kind of a full retest. I know we had some positive developments yesterday it wasn't a piercing pattern but we did have a wick it was a hammer candlestick we have a little little wick at the bottom it's not a huge one but i think eventually this will work its way on higher we've broken to the upside step one step two is to create a higher low and then step three is to basically break out above 82 once we do that we're in a new uptrend natural gas uh still we've got warm weather coming here and i know some people oh the weather guys the weather is what drives natural gas because it its main function is electricity generation and heating. And with the warm weather over in Europe, they didn't really draw down their natural gas inventories. And we also had some warm weather over here too. So this has been a huge, it's been weighing on natural gas and we've been selling off. But I will say there's going to be an opportunity in the future when this bottoms to load up on natural gas companies for very cheap, which is a huge opportunity. XOP, yeah, you know me, getting the big hammer candlestick today. So it was selling off throughout the day, but buyers came in and bought it back up. Uh, I think that the markets are positioning in the oil and gas exploration companies. I think that the markets think that we're going to go higher because we've got a broken down trend. We've got candlesticks that are being bought up. They're not just getting sold off, you know, day after day after day, strong closings. We don't have any of that. We do have, if you kind of look at this, an inverted, it's a big inverted head and shoulders that is playing out. So we might have a little bit more consolidation to do on the right-hand side before we launch higher. Uh, I think that the consolidation is going to last in first quarter of 2023. And then after that, I think it's going to be hopefully game on uh, with oil uh, tracking higher and higher and higher throughout the year. So that's kind of my my guess on what could potentially happen and if it doesn't work out that way i'll just sit in it longer <laughs> oih a uh, little uh, bloody nose on the monthly candlesticks on the weeklies we're just moving sideways very bullish price action and here we are on the dailies uh the dailies still look good that's a bloody nose for the most part with the bullish engulfing yesterday so that generally indicates that we want to go higher still in uh, OIH, which is the energy oil service companies. And I still think this looks absolutely fantastic for a big move higher. Notice the big, large candlesticks and the small selling pressure. That's exactly what I look for. I call them bloody noses. They're continuation patterns to the upside. So that still looks good. Uh, Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. Let's go to the dailies here. Um, we do have that bearish engulfing yesterday, but we only had a small down or a small down candlestick in terms of momentum today. It was an up day because it gapped up and sold off a little bit. Let's see what happens tomorrow on Sprott because the URNM looks very strong. So um, I'm going to hold my breath. We're right at that 1818 uh, price level that we want to break out of. I'll uh, extend that over. And that's what we want to break. We want to break and close above that. It does look like to me that we're putting in some sort of you know, pennant formation where we might do something like that and then eventually break to the upside. Looking at URNM, uh, URNM is breaking, has broken to the upside, I should say, has broken. And we've got a nice big bullish engulfing today. Nice, strong finish for the most part. 
looks really good, guys. This is pretty dang bullish. It's a big candlestick too. Um, generally, when you start to see the buyers enter, you get these big green candlesticks all throughout, and the red candlesticks kind of, kind of subside. That's what we're seeing. We're seeing that trait. So we've broken out of this short-term pattern. We've broken out of the longer-term pattern. Uh, now it's uh, hold on to your shares and let's go, baby. TAN. TAN is also looking strong. Man, we've got a lot of strong candlesticks. This thing is peeking out. There it is right there. Uh, I do think that this is going to head on higher for TAN, solar companies. It's a double bottom pattern. Double booty. Uh, we've got COPX also heading higher. One and a half percent on up, looking very strong. We had a bullish engulfing yesterday that continues uh, to look very good. LIT also looking pretty good, uh, continuing to move higher. So that looks good as well. Uh, if you back out, that's what it looks like from a bigger picture perspective. And this is the top, the bottoming pattern that we broke out was right there. We had REMX. This guy is also breaking out of its pattern to the upside. There it is with the bullish engulfing yesterday. Uh, that does look like it could continue higher. Uh, and I don't know the path in the short term. It can grind on, you know, it can go up and down like this, grinding on higher. But uh, overall, I think it's going to move on up. Uh, S&P 500, higher. Uh, still looks good. A little bit of a wick at the top and bottom, but still looks good. Broken out of the downtrend, higher is what I would say. Um, NASDAQ. Moving on higher, up 2%, looking very good. Lower yields, higher stocks. Lower dollar and yields, definitely higher stocks. So that's what we've got, moving on higher. Uh, EEM, also moving on higher. Uh, EEM is one of my favorite plays for all this, and I think it's going to do very well over the next decade. Uh, if I were to say, well, what is it going to look like? I'm going to say it's going to look like something like this. <laughs> it's it's going to go up with a weakening dollar lower yields, and a tight commodity market. Uh, I think EEM looks fantastic down here. XHB, this is your home builders on higher. Home builders are breaking to the upside. Now, I know we've got a lot of bears. Bear, bear, bear on home builders. And finally, there's some positive, I'll say, news or data supporting at least my viewpoints on the housing market, which I think will, will do well. I think the housing market is stuck because of interest rates. And if interest rates go down, I think the housing market will get unstuck. I'll put it that way. Uh, Mu also heading higher with the overall market, still looking good for a move on up. Uh, if I were to put a kind of a, maybe a trend line on here, it's not too much. It looks like it's breaking to the upside any way you cut this. Copper uh, prices. Copper prices were down today, but we did put a wick on the bottom here. We got yesterday and today. So the sellers try to sell this off, but buyers came in and bought it back up both of these days. Is this the end of the pullback where we start to move higher? I don't know about that yet. We'll have to see some evidence of that. We've also had a pretty big run coming up here from 3.30 all the way to 4.30. Looking at lumber, lumber down a little bit today. Uh, overall, though, looks fantastic to move higher over time. We've got iron ore up 0.52%. I'm not going to look at the charts because it does, it's not updating. Nickel. Nickel is still looking fantastic to move on higher. It's a small little down day. We call that a bloody nose. Uh, you can see it here. You can't see the candlestick, but it's a little bloody nose there. Uh, aluminum, slightly lower today, down point, uh, 0.24, minus 2.43%. 2 2 Man, I was struggling to say that. I do think this will move on higher. It's an inverted head and shoulders. Let me put that in there. There it is. So what happens is uh, you break out. You sometimes get like a little retest move, which we're doing, and then it moves on higher. BDI, uh, this will go on higher, I think. It's up 0.15%, not much, but it's a slingshot cheetah pattern to move on up. Why do I say that? Falling wedge, false breakout to the downside, then we rip higher. Newcastle Coal. Now, this guy is following, in my opinion, natural gas. Uh, natural gas and coal compete with each other. So natural, natural gas is heading lower. Coal broke out to the downside. We're going to consolidate for a little bit. Ethereum, moving on up. This looks like we've got a nice little break to the upside here. And if we can hold tomorrow, I think we're going to head on higher. Uh, Bitcoin also heading higher, up 2.64%. And I think it will continue on up. Uh, I know a lot of people 
Uh, they were saying, oh, this isn't a bottoming pattern. It, it looked like it to me. I, I do fractal analysis. Fractal analysis is identifying repeated re uh, patterns that repeat over time on different time scales. And the way that this thing has fallen, and then the pattern that it's putting in is all jumbled up and put together, and I think it's going to break and move to the upside. But that's just my opinion there. Uh, it doesn't mean it will have to do that. Uh, again, midweek update will be least, released today on the website. Uh, don't forget to check it out. I'll let you know what I think is good and what I am doing. And it mainly is in two sectors, I would say. And then um, overall, today looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Uh, everything, uh, I would say, across all of the different sectors look pretty good. Uh, overall markets definitely look good. S&P 500, NASDAQ, gold and silver look very good. Uh, uranium looks unbelievably good. And then um, some of the energy, I mean, energy, yeah, it was down a little bit today. But overall, I think it looks good. And copper was down a little bit. Uh, but those, those will come around. Just give it time. All right, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.